So there was a woman among us, a Jewess. And that woman had seven husbands. Seven husbands she had. According to a Jewish practice. You see, the Jews, they had a custom that if one brother died, and if he had no left, uh, left no offspring, then the second fellow takes a wife. And when he fails, the third. And when that guy fails, the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh. Seven guys had this one woman, one after another. But there was no problem. Because it was one by one. Now they want to know from Jesus that at the resurrection, Yawm al Qayyama, when all everybody wakes up same time from Adam to eternity, then seven brothers also waking up same time and they see this woman, they say, May fro. Everybody say, May fro. There's a war in heaven between the brothers. This is mine. The other guy says, This is mine. There's a fight. Seven brothers, because they all had her, they want to have her on the other side. So they want to know which guy is going to have her on the other side, because they all had her here. This is what the Bible says. They all had her here, so they want to have her on the other side. Which guy is going to have him? Who will be entitled to have her on the other side? In answer to that, Jesus says, Neither shall they die anymore. Once they are resurrected, they will be immortalized. This is a mortal body, which has got its mortal needs, food, shelter, clothing, sex, rest. Without these things, no Indians left, no Afrikaners left, no Malays left, nothing. That body will be an immortal body. No food, no shelter, no clothing, no sex, no rest. He said, neither shall they die anymore. For they are equal unto the angels. Meaning they will be angelized. They will be spiritualized. They will be spiritual creatures. They will be spirits. For they are equal unto the angels and the children of God. Such are the children of the resurrection. Spirits. He says, when uh, he has had knee flesh and Vienna, so was he has seen that he had knee. A spirit has no flesh and bones. I am not resurrected. Can't you see? Simple, basic knowledge. Why does he have to convince anybody that the spirit has no flesh and bones? You don't have to prove it to an atheist, to an agnostic, to a Hindu, to a Jew, anybody, everybody. We believe that the spirit, spirits have no flesh and bones. Because they are thinking he is a spirit. He's come back from the dead. So he's telling, I'm not there. Can't you see, you fools? What's wrong with you? And they believe not for joy. They are overjoyed and wondered what happened. So he says, have you here any meat, something to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he had a dit khaniyam and fuer hala uwakha yet. And he took it and he ate in the very sight. I said to prove what? That is a ghost. That is a spirit. That is resurrected. Resurrected bodies eat broiled fish and honeycomb. Do they? He's proving to you, I'm the same fellow man, what's wrong with you fools? Look, Mary Magdalene says she's, he, was, he was alive. You know, the other disciples, when they said, look, he's alive. They said, and they believe not. Now, these ten, they tell Thomas. Thomas wasn't there. They said, look, the master was here. And he ate with us, broiled fish and honeycomb. He says, I will not believe. What will he not believe? Imagine, this doubting Thomas. He's become famous for doubting. Thomas, this is, was his name. He said, I will not believe. Why won't he believe? Because they're telling him he's a living Jesus. He's alive, not his ghost. He even said, look, we saw the ghost of Jesus. They see them every day. In those days, they're seeing them every day. No, they're not talking about ghost, about spook, about spirits. They're talking about him, himself, the man eating broiled fish and honeycomb. He said, I will not believe. Eight days later, Jesus comes again. Now he sees this guy. Thomas says, hey, Thomas, come, come. Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and put your hand into my side and don't be faithless. Now he realizes what a fool he was. So he says, my God, my Lord. So now the Christians say he recognized that Jesus is his God and his Lord. Imagine, you know, you exclaim, <laughs> you go and report me to the special branch that the that was preaching communism here <laughs> to you all, communism. So they come along, give me, harass me, they give me trouble. And they tell me eventually, he says, you know, he says, look, it's your friend, man. Who? Mr. Muhammad. He said, he is the guy who was, you know, prodding us. So when I meet him, his broad smiling face, my benefactor, my friend, I say, Sali, my God, what a thing to do. Sali, my God. He is my God. I say, Sali, Allah, what a thing you have done. Sali, Allah, you Allah. What's wrong with you people? This is an exclamation, what a fool that I was, man. Eh, the, the ten disciples telling that he is alive, and I said, I will not believe. 
What reason did they have to lie? All the ten, he disbelieved them all. Why? Because they were telling that he was alive. Now you know this crucifixion. It has become a joke by God. It has become a joke. You know, the way they have been trying to tell us about what a thing it was, it is not so serious as people have been preaching all along. In the Philippines, in the footsteps of Jesus, you'll find in this book of mine, page 85. Don't open it now. Don't open it now. Page 85, you'll find an article from Dar es Salaam of the Sunday News. You'll find there, Jesus' footsteps. And you find in there that this crucifixion, crucifixion that seven persons, let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. He says here, on Good Friday, at least seven cases of crucifixion were reported in the local press. But the word crucifixion is in inverted commas. Six times in this article, the word crucifixion occur, and every time in inverted commas. You know what that means? It means they were not crucifixions. It means the so-called. You see, when it is in inverted commas, this is where people talk about crucifixion, but it was not really crucifixion. In inverted commas. Instead of writing every time the so-called crucifixion, the so-called crucifixion, the newspaper loses its value. So they don't want to tell you really, but they put it in inverted commas. This reporter, Rick Gratton, you know, he had the brains. He knew what he was doing. Six times, every time, the word crucifixion is in inverted commas. Meaning, it was not really the crucifixion. Listen. On Good Friday, at least seven cases of crucifixion were reported in the local press. One of these was a Lucian, was Luciana Rios, a 23-year-old factory worker and the first woman known to have performed the ritual. First woman got crucified. But she wasn't crucified because she was alive. She, she lives. She's still living. See? So what do you call that? These Christians, this attorney from uh, uh, Benoni, a born-again Christian, and this guy Josh McDowell, they wrote a book. And in that, they are asking me the question. They haven't got a word in their language for a person going on the cross and going through the ordeal and not dying. Would you say he was crucified when 20 years later somebody shot him? Or 20 years later he was hanged? Or 5 years later a motor car knocked him down? What was his end? Crucified? No. What, was hap what happened on the cross? There is no word in the English language. For that they're making a mockery of me. I said, I'll supply you the word. You know, these educated fools, I tell you, fools. They haven't got a word in their own language to tell us what happened. A man is taken to the gallows. The noose is put around his neck. The rope is pulled. But before the man expires, they cut the rope. Was the man hanged? What? One word. Give me one word in your language. There isn't. You haven't got a word in your language to describe that. Is that my fault? I said, what it is? It is not crucifixion in inverted commas. It is crucifixion. These are fictions taking place. These are fairy tales. Zan. So, a woman now. A woman is doing that. She did it. First woman to do that. The crucifixion, some shown live on television. They show them alive on television. Have now become the climax of Easter week in the Philippines. In some cases, they attract thousands of visitors to provincial towns where the atmosphere is a blend of carnival and deep mourning. Something, suggestion for our Christian brethren here. What about enacting something here in series or somewhere around here in Bontivar? Look, you'll get thousands of people coming along to see the fun. They're doing it in the Philippines. They're getting themselves hung on the cross. Nailed, nailed. And they're not dying. It's because they're doing it for kicks. You know, kicks for enjoyment, for pleasure. One man fainted. After being removed from the cross, he had to be carried to a waiting bus. Another was up and smoking a cigarette as soon as his hands were bandaged. These are the crucified people. Who do you call them crucified? Or crucifixed? They're not crucified, crucifixed. And what's taking place is crucifixion. F I C T I O N, fiction. Not F I X I O N. It's not crucifixion, it is crucifixion. F I C T I O N, it's a fiction taking place. And they're doing the real thing, not like what they do in films. They just try and show you. As if the man is getting, you know, like this films you see, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, the day of triumph, king of kings, they show the man, you know.